Greetings everyone and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Welsh lover, Mocha lover, and right now we're going to combat Anglos at all costs. Weekly progress report to the committee against Anglo domination. Increase in production of our This Man is No Friend of Ours poster from 800 daily copies to 950. Funding the new local radio program in Redacted, giving daily updates on listeners to the cultural achievements of the Welsh and the abject degeneracy of the Anglos. Successful talks with historians and academies or academics belonging to the Redacted. <clears throat> Promises made to produce exactly 150 books on Welsh history and culture by 1970. Clear success for the Blanket Cardiff campaign. Every business now has at least two official posters displayed on the entryway. Success in joint operation between our Swansea Information Office and the South Wales Police Office. Or the South Wales Police. 17 local agitators have been arrested for the role in defacing our materials. Further analysis forthcoming. Surveys just to be are yet to be completed on effects of propaganda. Expectations of greatly increased hostility to Anglos, if not purging of underperforming staff, including Redacted, may be necessary at present. Progress of Operation Redacted shows a weakness of terrorist strategy. General acceptance of our materials. Signed, Torch. Fantastic news to hear. Oh, those gosh darn Anglos, hope you guys are having a pretty good day. Uh, we actually have a few comments to probably go through as well. And, yeah. Anglos. Do we imprison them? Or we just say, hey, it's time for segregation. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, actually, this one gives you technically no more stability. This will give you more daily political power, but you get more stability here, which I want. So, Anglo politicians go bye bye. It's a great failure, Mr. Lewis, to have ever allowed for the political participation of the so called independents. These creatures are unionists in all but name, making their sole goal the destruction of all freedom for Wales. Our independence, the liberty of our working class, and any kind of survival of the Welsh culture, these monsters seek to burn it down in the name of the blind English liberalism. We should begin with John Morris, leader of this gang of thugs, and quickly move down the ladder. Once the radical Anglo agitators see what happens to traitors in our nation, they will surely think twice before ever trying to destroy our sovereignty. From that point forward, our government can finally be free, one government by and for the Welsh people without outside interference. Wow, we've got one factory. That is not good. Oh boy. Our anti air is doing okay, but that's pretty normal. We need way more anti tank. And guns are looking okay as well. Not great, but okay. The English devil? Why not? It's so heartening to see that so many artists and intellectuals in this country have not been poisoned by leftism. In recent days, we've seen an outpouring of support among them to help end our campaign against English devils. Children's books authors have accepted various manuscripts given to them from Grab the Devil by His Horn to The Little Free Soldier. We're harnessing cinema too with a team of the nation's finest directors coming together to create a picture outlining our glorious battle against the Anglos. Of course, just beyond the media, we aim to have even the most remote villages aware of the Anglo's degeneracy. Our Minister of Information will oversee the production of over 100,000 posters and educational pamphlets. No wall will be, will be passed without a reminder that violent Anglo crimes. No street corner shall be witness or should be without our best men handling out pamphlets, handing out pamphlets, illustrating the superiority of the Welshman. In every mind and every soul, it shall be Wales above all else. So one of the comments was, I should play other Welsh pass. I, mean, I think that was a comment from yesterday as well. Actually, we have six, six divisions, not bad. But yeah, play more Wales. I eventually I will, probably. <clears throat> um, oh, finished military government steps down. Ooh. And the government government prevails in the English Civil War. Oh, boy. We gotta be ready, boys and girls. We gotta be ready. Even though there's probably all boys just watching. Or guys. Hmm. This is not looking good for us. Oh, no. You know what? If we can't build these, can we just build land courts? Maybe, please, <laughs> please. Yeah, we can. It only takes five months. That's all. It's all it takes five months. Jesus Christ. English double, and then segregation laws. Our top adversaries. Advisors have recently released a joint statement for the separation of Welsh and Anglo citizens. Its logic is sound as would be expected from our top minds. For one, they point out to the already de facto separation existing between Anglo and Welsh. The latter, or the, the Anglo hiding away in Swansea and surrounding villages more loyal to a dead king than are to our national, national project. If we, they desire to live separately from us, so be it. They'll have no right to complain if they suddenly find their desire to move over to the prosperous Welsh regions once they declared beneath them. Building on this, our advisors also point to evidence on increasing criminality among the Anglos, along with less desire to work and more support for communism. This is all scientifically proven, and makes one ask why the backwards Lewis government ever believed that these two groups could ever function side by side. Let them run their own little net education and law enforcement, we shall have no part in it. Thus, and this, they argue, is a path to true equality, a separation of culture, cultures based on how they desire to live. Separate but equal, we shall protect this great nation. <clears throat> now please buy more guns, please. Please. Mm-mm. Mm. -mm. mm. 
My apologies. The playground purges. Everyone had opinions on the Warriors, as the boys called themselves. No fourth grader at Caldecott Elementary moved or talked like Adam, Dylan, or Maxwell. Before Kyle's coup, before all the anti-English messaging began to flood the streets, they already were known to pick on the quiet kids, the solo kids. But something changed for a few months back. They began to pick new targets, sing out any Anglo-sounding kid, even if they were relatively popular, for the victims of the shoving, the smashing of lunches, the jeering as they walked home. They thought maybe they could come together and change something. At least the parents did. <clears throat> Andrew was always a favorite victim of theirs, even before they began to style themselves as Welsh warriors, noogies, noogies came without end. But when things escalated, when things came home one day with a nosebleed, when, when he did, his mother went straight to the principal. All she got was a dismissal saying it was just a bit of boyhood fun. But just a few months ago, though, uh, to go, Andrew was convinced that he could stick things out before moving on to some new school. Today, looking out at the sea on the horizon, he wondered where else he could attend, what other lands lie beyond. Then he was slammed against a chain-linked fence. <clears throat> Hey, Anglo, think about running away? Thought you could leave us? We're supposed to be good buddies. Dylan's voice was unmistakable. The way too gruff tone that cuts through you like a razor blade. Yeah, they just never want to be your friends, no matter how nice that you are. Adam, the classic imitator. Andrew couldn't recall one time where his insults were just copied off Dylan. Heh, <laughs> maybe he was just going to blow something up. Yeah, Anglo? Maxwell always squealed like a pig. I say we dump him in the sea. Ooh, I like that. He gets him all the way back to England, said Dylan. Then we don't need to see your a, a poop butt haircut anymore. Yeah, it's a poop butt haircut, remarked Adam. Well, Anglo, it is early. We're going to leave for now, but just thought you should be reminded who's boss. Keep looking at the sea. Pretend we're not here. And don't you dare tell just what happened is going to look like we were playing nice. Dylan rasped. And with that, the Welsh warriors let Andrew go. Ran back off to torment some other poor soul. Andrew tried swallowing his tears to no avail and once again looked to the sea. I hate this place. <clears throat> then you have your kids using those bad words. Jeez. Maybe I won't come to Wales then someday. <laughs> oh, look at that. Research. Land doctrine. Please. Um, infantry organization. As much as I love military factory construction speed, we gotta get more organization. Uh, you know, of this, all the soldiers that they do have, they're looking pretty th not bad. Are we getting any more army XP for It seems like it's just barely going up. And it is barely going up, but still. But we'll do second class citizens. There is an iron law of nature. The strong shall inherit the world, while the weak and unfit shall perish. As the finish of the Welsh people, we shall take the principle seriously. Oh, we have a new legislation that allows us to rightfully reward the producti productivity and loyalty of the average Welshman, while pushing out the slothful traitorous Anglos. We shall prevent these backwards elements from operating businesses without our comprehensive approval, and shall do the same in regards to their schools and advocacy organizations. We also aim to implement a system of passes required for the free movement, in order to fight trans metropolitan crime. This all be, must be done rigorously to uphold the segregation of our two parallel peoples, for we can never again allow ourselves to be held back by the laws of unionists. Let them cry out discrimination if they so desire. We know this is the only way Wales can remain free. <clears throat> Come on. Can we please get more army XP? We gotta get up to a minimum of 20 to make these guys 20 combat with. But even then, that's really hurting our anti-tank. And why can't I buy anything? They fail to do stuff, and they don't have stockpiles up, do they? They don't have any anti-tank. Oh, for the love of God. Uh, how about artillery? Oh, they, okay, it's available now. But there's still nothing we can buy. <laughs> uh, not even guns? Republic of Brittany. For the love of God, Brittany, what the heck are you doing? Promote Welsh values. Yeah, I'll get more defensive core territory, that's good. Our independence means little if we are still colonizing every aspect of the culture. Centuries of English domination have driven our language, history, and arts to near extinction. All of our forces should be directed to reverse this atrocious state of affairs. The battle begins in schools, Welsh only, from the womb, and from a curriculum with the curriculum outlining a millennia of struggle and peerless works of culture our citizens have created. Our next generations will eat and breathe their culture, but the struggle must take on all facets of society. Facets of society. We must rigorously subsidize any works reviving and propagating our culture, wholeheartedly spread the Welsh language to every secluded corner. And otherwise foster in every Welshman that they are the world's strongest and richest culture standing guard against English domination. I just want to buy guns, man. Society belongs to the Welsh. One way or another, Helen finds herself at Jonesy's pub once more. The past few months have been a maelstrom, a crushing blow to her now quaint hopes of a fresh start. Starting on her third pent of stout, she swam once again into the hell that her past had been in this miserable country. Her escape was nearly two decades ago, running off to Swansea with her newly married husband. It was supposed to become a fairy tale, a journey through the land of dragons, instead it became an ever-tightening labyrinth. <clears throat> Two years ago, the man she thought she would marry her, her, for her forever finally left. That flandering and distant piece of crap finally had the courage to walk away. Looking bad, it was, it was foolish. I think anything could become better than the Welsh nightmare. And so she was simply left to rotate through various menial jobs in the city, left with no respite if she found herself fired. A few of her smarter friends told her to join Gox uh, Camry to fight for a red whale. She never took interest, and now her friends haven't been seen in weeks. 
As she stood up, Helen got quickly her bearings. A high tolerance for drinking was necessary to, in, to, in order to survive a swan sea. Turning to the bartender, she told him goodbye, then slowly made her way to the door, exiting into the cold, damp light. Helen barely thought it was necessary to wonder whether someone had called her a skinny Anglo person. Just leave it behind, only swing at them if necessary. Then she heard it again. Hey, this country, the voice alerted. This country belongs to us, not you grubs. Move out of here or Kyle will get you. <clears throat> Helen thought she would keep going, keep ignoring and not getting dragged into a bar fight. And then the bald man swung in from behind and shoved her onto the cold pavement. Started shouting and saying things about how she was a communist, a wolf in sheep's clothing. When a woman came up behind his, this hairless, middle-aged pug, pugilist, she simply pulled him away and they disappeared in the night. Slowly, Helen got to her feet, gazed up to the stars. What must I do? She thought to leave this awful place. Another day in the New Wales. Well, you could always probably get on, get on a boat one way or another to America, probably. Oh, uh, man, Pats. Oh, please, 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 please. Uh, even though we do need more guns. Actually, probably the next one we'll do is guns. <sighs> Come on. Ah. Uh, Army XP, please. And we just want 20 combat with. Because at 20 combat with, we might be able to hold out, maybe. Now, we're on a time on a time limit here. Because eventually... Oh, come on. They'll eventually probably try to attack us and such. So, But we've got to fade the military. The wolf circle with bated breath. Only the most loyal, well-trained, and fully armed military can be effective in a longer nation and have a chance in the hell of survival. The fighting force swelling with many zealous FWA supporters is unfortunately governed by an old guard of officers. Some are loyal to Wales, but of all else, and will gladly take our side. Others may need a bit more convincing, either through a few nice promises or the examples made of traitors. Finally, there are the traitors who hold posts from the top down. Unionists and communists both sides weaken and feminize their boys. We shall weed them out. Let's move forward to the plan for an all-officer conference uh, in order to find out where every single member of the old guard stands. We lose some more support. So be it. Advocate Welsh traditionalism. Let's go more defensive core territory. That's nice. Point three. At this point, stop training for now. I'm going to throw on some things here. A little bit of lag. There we go. Cool. Actually, that requires even more than just normal stuff. So, we're going to throw in artillery. We're, we're not going to have enough artillery at all. We can throw more guns than artillery. Alright, let's take one off then. Uh, let's just throw on this end. 15 combat with? We only have 170, so. Do we have enough artillery for this? No, but it's going to be better, I guess we'll say. Oh, God, that really hurt manpower. Whew. Yep, that really hurt the manpower quite a bit. Ooh. Go and do that, too. Why not? Are we mobilizing any more? Nope. All right. Spend more money, then. That's fine. The military and then integrate the Free Welsh Army. So now that the Free Welsh Army is ensured to control of the nation and the military has had its loyalties ensured, we no longer need the FWA to be a separate entity. We will integrate them into the military branches to reduce the administrative burden of managing two separate militaries. While we're at it, we should also make sure that the FWA leaders are put in positions of significant leadership as generals and commanders. Nice. Even though we get all this political power, but we don't really need it. <sighs> hmm. So, can the game, like, somewhat, like, glitch again or something, or bug out, and where we can get, like, even more, please? That'd be nice. <laughs> free Welsh Army, and then celebrate their achievements. The Welsh people owe their freedom to the brave men and women of the Free Wales Army. It is only appropriate that they are allowed for the sacrifices and duties. We shall give them parades, we shall give them medals and rewards, we shall give them discounts at all the pubs. Is it not fitting that their achievements are recognized and are appreciated by the people they have freed? Cool. And they were defeated. The Crimson Flame is extinguished for criminals to commanders. Recommendations and analysis of the Defense Ministry regarding newly appointed officers. Valid concerns raised by redacted on competency of former FWA commanders being transferred to Army posts. Assuaging fears shall take three steps. A holding of two-month training and education courses. Immediate removal from past, present drug and alcohol users. And greater Army centralization to grant majority decision-making to top brass. Past these programs, appointment by these f former FWA fighters already caused for great optimism. Early inquiries show officer-led political education to be effective among ser servicemen. Majority of appointees approved of by subordinates based on the same inquiry, along with empirical evidence pointing to greater consistency and decisiveness regarding disciplinary actions. Dozens of barracks already hosted a successful purging of ranks, 
Current figures have estimated over 200 unionists and communist operatives have been identified by such actions necessary to universally implement redacted protocols. Experience of new officers in FWA leads to a greater flexibility of tactics. Cursory observations show many unique tactics, such as redacted. Imperative to build and spread most effective tactics to ensure effective combat against numerically superior foes. And final analysis. Officers drawn from the FWA bring new initiative, discipline, and ideological coherence to armed forces. Further inquiries into troop loyalty necessary, standardization or standardized methods for discipline and tactics to be implemented as soon as possible. Arms set to be far more cohesive than disjointed pre than disjointed pre revolutionary form. Signed by Pro Without Anglos, nothing holds back our might. Some more commanders, huh? That's cool. Uh, I really don't want to do anti unionist perk because that hurts our army XP game, but we have to do it anyways. At the highest ranks, English Roaches have infiltrated our army. We must immediately remove them from all their posts and try them for a cowardly stewardship of what they could have been an indomitable force. Once these traitors are out of the way, the members of the brass who have not yet taken a side will be forced to make their move. Either way, following our lead upholding whales above all, they shall be shot like lowly, uh, or they shall be shot look like a lowly militiaman. Any unfound fears that purging a loyal dis Purging disloyal elements will weaken our army. Simply lack a commitment to the national struggle. So many fine commanders have been born from the FWS heroic campaign and will be perfectly suited to lead this institutional force. Every gun from there on shall be locked out and loaded, pointing to every single enemy of our people. Lose war support, enforce loyalty, less army experience gain, less recruitable population factor, which sucks. Division recovery rate too. Man, it sucks losing your factories. That really sucks. <laughs> Uh, let's go ahead and boost this up too. Just because we get more political powers, which is nice and all, but we gotta get some of that. My goodness, we're looking so not great. <laughs> A united. Ooh. What the heck? Oh. I thought they were gonna go to fight us immediately. So we got a little bit of time still. Oh, goodness. Good, good, good. Please don't fail us again. I'm gonna grab some more guns if we can. And then. Political officers. Uh, the way to control military is through its leaders. If we're to ensure its loyalty, we need to put out or put officers loyal to us in command. Any officers in the military who are of dubious loyalty will be replaced by more pliable members. We should also implement political officers throughout the ranks to prevent the proliferation of traitors' thoughts. Through this, we should make certain that we can always rely on the military to carry out what is best for Wales. Cool. More organizations always always welcome. Come on, please, 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 please work. We need more guns. Oh, come on. How? Seriously, how? Brittany, Brittany, you suck. You really suck. Yeah, honestly, if we can't, like, win against England or the Kingdom of England normally, I might pull a few strings and make sure that we do win in the end, just because, I mean, what, what can we do? Like, there's not much we can do at all. I mean, yeah, we've done really well in our land auction, but probably still have the English. Ay, ay, ay. We're really lacking a bunch of anti-tank, artillery, such like that. And then every, every citizen's duty. It is a sweet and fitting that every man does his duty to protect the nation that has given him everything he has. It's only a matter of time before the despicable English return to try and once again be, put us beneath their boot. When that time comes, we will be ready, but only if we each give each if each man gives his country priority over his own life. Are you doing your part for your draft? Yeah, it's a necessary evil. And it doesn't even matter since we can't really build that much anyway, so might as well, right? Diary of Matthew's Rise, <clears throat> Volume 1, August 11th. Third day without command. The boys are all carrying on as normal, eating breakfast, washing clothes, effing around. Captain Powell is leading us through basic drills, but he's not like the Major. We've turned all turned to him. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we have all turned to him like he's a gosh darn teacher. What Kyle is going to do? What do you think is going to happen to the Colonel and Major? Where do you think they are? He doesn't know, of course, but we really can't complain. They're both real a-holes, and everyone loves Powell. August 16th, finally. Today we're introduced to our new black flag commanders, replacing the old guard of Colonel Sayer and Major Gruffold. Nothing, neither of which look to have broken 30. Heck. The Major looks like he could be Powell's younger brother. Thankfully, they immediately operated like real leaders. We got split up into various groups, small groups, cells, I think they called them. So they were modeling unit structure on how the FWA did it. While we were divided up into these newly assigned groups, we all wondered if Jones and Rice would mouth off, t them typically being quite open to boisterous talks of politics. Nothing happened, thankfully, though I don't recall them seeing as we split off. September 1st, this one will be short. New drills are exhausting. Ten miles we ran a day, full gear in a rail rainstorm, which isn't too much worse than what we once did. But then our daily guerrilla training started for the English devils, they are, as they said, the ones who inevitably will try to destroy us. We had to shed some gears and began to fan out into the abandoned neighboring uh, village, and we were instructed to spend the next hour moving from house to house, collecting some kind of token from each to show we did it. Grueling stuff. FW boys are crazy. September 16th, tonight, 
one month into the new leadership, we receive our first political education course. Nothing, nobody really knows what to expect, at least not the average guys like me. A few new recruits from the FW are saying that's just a more interesting version of history, mixed with some important lessons for itself. Me and myself would drink heavily, drink heavy under normal circumstances before something like this, but unfortunately, Sayer and Gruffud are much stricter on the flow of booze. It doesn't help that something like 30 of our guys got discharged. I liked a few that I liked a lot. Oh well, I'm here for the country, not for myself. Love for the country must often be taught. Get a whole point five more war support. And cons consolidation. The opposition has been silenced, the sin has been crushed, and the military has been made loyal. The English in the country have been put in their place, and the Welsh people, proud of the heritage and willing to serve, are now united against the English menace. We now hold complete power of the people for their own good, of course. We can now steer the country towards a better future for all of Wales. Now, now to run the nation. As Tricky Dick resigns. Oh, man. Yeah, I definitely probably have to pull some strings. I mean, a war sword's pretty good. And we'll, it'll shoot up to 100% probably, too, once we're in a defensive war, but... Without pretty much anything, there's not much we can really do. I mean, the force will be very, 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 very helpful. But if they have, like, infantry fighting vehicles or even tanks, we're not going to be able to do that well, probably. Okay, so we're done with that. We're going to immediately start doing some of this stuff, because this is just too, too outdated. So 10% more soft attack. We should have already had that a long time ago. Uh, building this stuff is good enough, but we can't even do anything. We don't have any factories. We literally don't even have a factory to do this stuff, so... Um, and our infantry divisions, the Home Guard, they literally have no support equipment either, so I guess we'll just keep doing some of this defense. Sure, why not? We can't build anything. What's the point of doing it? That's pretty good. Two political power day. Uh, some of the comments included, uh, keep playing different whales. Yeah, I think I already said that earlier. I can't remember. Play Bormann, Germany. Um, yeah. Yeah. Those are the mains when I remembered. So, consolidation. And maybe we'll get another unique book of street, maybe? A little bit of lag. It's June 29th-ish. 1964. Anything here new? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe that. Maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe now we're just destined to get annexed by the English. Perhaps. Perhaps not. So, if nothing pops up, I'll probably forward us ahead of time. Just to see what happens. So... And of course, I'll be buying a lot more guns too. Who is that? Echeverria elected president of Mexico? Huh. Okay, cool. Oh, there goes Speer. Oh, that's a social democrat, huh? Fraying ideals. President Kennedy was assassinated. Well, I'm assuming, I guess now at this point, there's not too much else here, so. Maybe there's an event for Wales defeating England, but I just can't imagine that we could def really defeat them. What's left to sort out? That's a lot of manpower. That's a lot of divisions. Oh, hold on, the best is yet to come. Maybe not. Maybe not. Preliminary report to the National Cabinet on success of Cayo administration, economic and social. All analysis and inquiry shows blistering successes in the first months of our administration. The data drawn from our study is undeniable. Economics, fastest economic growth in the nation's history, spurred on by acquisition of redacted and Anglo assets. National subsidies proven to be hugely successful in ignored ignore northern regions. Greatest increase in industrial production and starting of new businesses in the region's history. Business owners report period to the greatest time for business in the nation's history, citing a commitment to fighting communist unions. Work stoppages at all-time low. Tax rates reductions for all Welsh citizens also proven to be a boon. Unemployment and poverty among all Welsh down to be near zero. Social. Crime pl rates plummeted to all-time lows, owing to better equipment for police, more vigorous campaigns against terrorist groups, use of redacted tactics against radicalized villages have wholly removed problems of radical bases. Bright and Welsh culture and language are nearly 100%. Academia has been wholly cleansed of, of any anti-patriotic propaganda. All children are now set to be influenced to be fluent in Welsh. Furthermore, all media and literature on track to be Welsh only within one decade. Creation of Anglo zones already removing destitution, radicalism from Welsh population centers. Where are the steps necessary to implement? Drafts of laws regarding mis miscegenation, cohabit cohabit uh, cohabit cohabitation, etc. American models exemplary, and early talks with Mr. Redacted on guidance on separating cultures proving to be useful. Closer integration of the military and police for purposes of civic respect and efficiency. Further investigations into unions and communist sentiments among so-called Welshmen also necessary. Garb of culture cannot be allowed to mask capable ideas. Finally, expansion of experimental research and in particular our recent redacted program among residents of the redacted region will prove essential for national survival and creation of a true model Welshman. Signed, Professor. We march ever forward to true independence. Ah, oh, we do have more focuses. Great. Great. Wow. Quite a bit more. Now to run the nation. The work of five and a half centuries is done. Once more, there's a 
of Y. F. Mab Darogan. Once more, there is a man of Welsh birth, of Welsh blood, and charges Cymru, the true name for a land and not that imposed by the English dogs. But success mustn't get to our heads, for with a power secured, there's always now work to be done. We should need a bigger army to defend our soil from the English encroachment. The economy is so mismanaged by incompetent, treacherous unionists that it must be rebuilt, and those unionists who brought who almost brought our great nation to ruin must never be given the opportunity to solely wills with their feeble attempts at government governance. Democracy is failing the Welsh people, and the free wills shall not fail them. I hope we can hold out, man. I just want more guns and arms for the people. Oh, it's looking so bad. We have empty air, but still. That's some support equipment. Oh, crap. Thatcher was elected. Oh, this can't be good for us. <laughs> At least most, the, the majority of their divisions are militia. The vast majority. Some are infantry. Are you, okay, what's going on? Why does the black market always fail? It's completely unreliable. I mean, even doing this stuff, like, all this stuff would not really help us at all. Hmm. Oh man, look at what the heck is Julian here. Holy crud. Is he a, a priest? No? Hmm. Getting the elite's trust. Inspiration for Franco. Well, let's get the elite's trust. We could use more stability. Some activists, as if the upper classes are inherently hostile to the peoples of Wales, but the facts of the matter is that they are equally victims of the English oppression as, a, as us as well. The businessmen who funded our liberation, the clergy who kept the tongues of the people safe for centuries, the landowners who do not show their true colors and flee all are all useful to, uh, to us. We will have to give certain assurances, of course, on matters of continued ownership of land and rights for the churches who see things their way. Perhaps some favorable contracts to Welsh businesses as well, provided that they grant us their support. Nothing should go wrong for them. Turn a country. The document is not an overly long invitation. Oh, it's a few pages, but considering the scope of what it proposes, Julian Cayo Evans is surprised that he manages to condense it as much as he has. He's always dreamed of a free brotherhood of Celtic nations. He's seen them to be freed from England by the German invasion, yet to Cayo's own consternation, no one ever proposed the obvious next step. Although the other free Celtic nations of the world would not do it for them, it then fell to the oldest, oldest sibling to give them a push. The Celtic Liberation Army was the first step to his plan, and the Kyle Evans felt that it was also the most important. Before the Celtic nations could begin working against England in a united front, they would have an army capable of defeating them. A unified army under one command and with one vision. Only then could the matter of England be settled properly. Yet as he sat at his desk, the Y Mab Darogan couldn't help but check over the next the text once more. He thought it eloquent enough, but there was no shame in having it looked over once again to make sure. Calling his secretary, Julian Kyle Evans took the first step into a new world. Soon of the invitations, the army of liberation shall meet. And hopefully it allows us to use our political power for more stuff, because we've got a lot of it. If I do this again, it's gonna cost us more, which I don't care, really care about. But do we get more population that maybe we could use for our, our army, maybe? That'd be kind of nice. Sixteen days left, fifteen days left, not bad. So, it is sixty-four. After this, we'll probably go with better guns. Probably. How do we have motorized equipment too, but not even 1958 guns? We might as well use these guns, I guess. Rifle improving upon shortcomings noticed in the Second World War, less complex and more reliable, the less rifle could be modified easily to meet the demands of the environment it's serving in. Well, that's okay. Cool. Is that what is that what an improved infantry rifle really looks like? Wow. <clears throat> Especially with that helmet still? Hmm. Oh whatever. It is what it is. Spend more, I guess, make more construction. Alright, restart the factories. Ooh, you know what? That doesn't even matter, we're not going to do it. Inspiration from Franco. The Caldillo by beer is a man who's imposed a vision onto an entire nation, one who has for decades kept control even when outside forces are more numerous than his own sought to ensure it otherwise. The YM. Why Mab Dragon, or Darrow Gone, sees much to admire in Francisco Franco and equal sorts. The art of control is a subtle one, and Julian K. Evans know that acting in haste will do the state little good. Internal enemies must be played against each other where possible and removed if they start getting ideas. External foes can be placated, but they must not feel slighted too much lest they take a keener interest in Camry. It will be a difficult work ensuring that the nation remains stable, but it is worth doing. Yes, we get more despotism? Well, it's kind of a waste, I'll be honest. <laughs> kind of a waste for more despotism, but that's just me, probably. So we got one fact, one thing up here, right? We have one port. Oh my goodness, trying to fight these guys is gonna be impossible. It's gonna be so impossible. Reinforcing the police though, that's good. Police are traditionally a tool of English to oppress the Welsh spirit. Used to crush our demonstrations and hold our country hostage. Well, turnabout is fair play, and there are quite a few Englishmen to have grudges against in this day and age. 
First of all, we need more forms of training. Other police will be more friendly to Welsh values and well less friendly to English ones. Expanding their number will assist in this. Many hands will make light work and all but the Y, Mab, Dar Darogan sees this reform of the constabulary, constabulary as important for another reason as well. Police make a decent stopping force in peacetime and in a time of war they might prove useful against traitors. What do you mean? I didn't, I didn't even buy anything. And they said it failed? I didn't even buy anything and said it failed. Oh, who is doing this? I'm going to blame Burgundy for this one. We can't even get anything. We're really just sitting here. Continue the cold trade. Retreat our position. Anglophobia. Support our Irish friends. <laughs> there you go. Oh crap, England's oh no 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 no. Uh Cornwall, good luck. I really hope and wish for you the best. They do have panzers, but hold on. They don't have a focus tree. I was considering playing as Cornwall, I guess. Give those English... Oh, one, two, buckle my shoe. Even more defense? Yeah. No, Cornwall, no. Uh, restart the factories, but it doesn't even matter. There may have been some slight uh, disruptions to industry during the liberation. Unintentional, yet also undeniable that cease the production of many a factory mill and mine. Dedicating some proper resources to get those factories in disrepair back on their feet might be worthwhile. We need the income after all, and we need the government now. It could prove beneficial to be productive. Jobs will aid our legitimacy to many people. If someone has three meals a day and a job which keeps a roof over their heads, they are far less likely to go thinking about things like unionism or democracy. After all, everyone has something they care about. Oh, man. I don't think we can join the, uh, the unity pack, can we? That'd be really cool if we could. The National Revolution? Um, hmm. Okay. Freedom for the Welsh. Well, we'll see what happens. Oof. 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 I don't like this. Can't even make anything. What's the point of this focus if we can't even make anything? Uh, what happened to our factories, too? Like, is it just consumer goods? And we have no... Actually, oh, do we have dockyards? We can't even... We don't have dockyards. God dang it. Um, I guess we could technically buy the dockyards, right? Yeah, well, random. All right, all right, whatever. <clears throat> Time for true reform. <clears throat> the people of Wales slaved under the English yoke for five centuries and nearly broke them before the free Welsh army started the liberation. But there are some who worry if the same tyrants on the dragon's coat. If we will be those people. The white map Daru Ghan's organ this be put to rest and tends to make a speech to the nation on the subject. Democracy is not needed for freedom. Freedom means an economy where men and women need not starve on the streets. Freedom means pensions for the old and health care for the sick. Freedom is not having to worry about the Germans coming back to the Isles once more. Julian Kyle Evans promises all this and more to the people of Wales if they only give him a chance. If they only give him a chance. Um Honestly, I I'd rather get guns right now, so <coughs> Alright, Dresher wins in Oslin. Restart the factorinos. Hmm. 75 days left, huh? No manpower. What do I even try? Seriously, there's no point even trying anymore then. Are they just gonna fail every single time? Where is the CIA? Where's Burgundy? We need guns. We need stuff, but they refuse to give us anything. Can we rent them? Okay, they said yes. Wow, that's five dockyards. Wow, that's not too bad. So we're demobilizing slowly. Demobilizing, maybe we'll mobilize more. Maybe I don't know. See what happens. Honestly, we don't have we don't even have the manpower to do that. So just make some a lot of this. What can we do here? Purchase a sub. Well. I guess, might as well, right? There's, no, there's literally nothing else we can do. A new economy for Wales, and such the world's anglophobia, support Irish brothers. Form the CLA? Yes. I kind of want to do that, and that's just the world. <clears throat> the Y Mab Darrow Gun's work in organizing the first stages of the Wealth Liberation has paid off handsomely. Now the FWA is in almost total control of Wales proper, outside the holdouts of some half starved pro union traders, that is. But the rest of the world is unaware of the reclamation of national sovereignty that has occurred. Aside from the most basic details, they know little enough about a revolution, something we must work to fix. 
Let us invite the rest of the world to see the restore glories of Wales. Let them see the dragonfly once more proud and true. The Germans and Americans alike will have to recognize us as no true puppet of their interests, and that under the guidance of the Y Map Darrow Gun, Wales shall prosper. I don't think we can join the Einheits back to Unity Pact, so I'd love to do this one. But there are forums. In the streets and the pubs and the homes and the halls of power, everyone talks about the Y Mab Darogan speech. Delivered live to an audience of a few hundred people, broadcast by radio and TV to all of Wales, Julie and Kyle Evans actually managed to make the economy seem interesting for a while. Denouncing the efforts of traitors, unionists, and the inability to fix the woes of the nation, Kyle Evans promised a new and expanded economy that relied more upon mere coal. He promised factories in the cities and an expanded agricultural base. He promised jobs and pay for every Welshman who could work and pensions for those who could not. Even when it came to the often discussed subject of reform, the Y Mob Daryl Gahn made clear his intentions to never harm the rights of the Welsh people, and that he would turn to the cesspit of political intrigue into something that served everyone, not the privileged and the English a few. Capped off with the denunciation of England, the speech was the most popular one by Kyle Evans yet. Though some doubt is sincerity on the subject of political reform, none could deny that from a distance it didn't seem a half bad plan. Well, none denied it openly anyways, and the New Wales people know better. Maybe we underestimated him. Maybe we did, maybe we didn't. Can I just, can I just buy lots of ships? I can just buy lots of ships. Holy crap. Do we have any ships? We do have some ships. Can I use these for manpower? Let's do, finish demobilizing first, and then maybe get rid of these guys, maybe? I don't know. Why not? So that's all we can spend our political power on, is just getting more ships. Okay, then. Whatever. I'd like to continue the trade, the coal trade, but I think it's probably best to retreat our position. So, it's probably best to do that. So, RFK has been inaugurated. The unfortunate fact is that an economy based upon a single material cannot be successful in the long term. The Y Mob Darrow Gun has made the difficult decision to stop the mining of further coal to, na to enable the Welsh economy to get back upon its feet. This will cause great hardship, that is much that much is true, and a great deal of it to the mining towns of some who almost rely entirely on the black gold of the mountains. It doesn't matter. Like anything good, too much can lead to addiction. We only sell coal to the Germans anyways. The merry band of imperialist conquerors and madmen who would see us swept before them if they had the chance to heck with them and their imports. The diplomats arrived. A steady stream of men in well tailored suits entered Cardiff over the course of a few weeks. Well, before they had merely designed or dined to watch from a distance to see the free well whose army was more bark than bite. Now the nation's rulers decided that the regime of the Y Mob Darrow Gun is here to stay. Like any polity worth its salt, they have to come ensure that the new regime's friendliness towards their new own causes. The Americans are a rather understated fellow with a glass who makes mention of the political benefits or potential benefits of the organization free nations would offer Wales. The Germans, an aristocratic man of Junker stock who gives the Hitler salute to the Y Mob Darrow Gun when he enters the room as befits a friend of the Reich. The Irishman merely gives some words of encouragement for Kyle Evans' bold rejection of English imperialism. From all nations of the world, they come and each one and every one seeks a deal or accommodation with a new state of affairs. What is notable, however, is the absence of English themselves, but few of it find difficult to imagine why this is the case. Wales is respected, and none let none deny this. Cool. We need more weapons. Oh yeah, the black market's available. Huh? Are they actually let us buy stuff? Probably not. Well, our uh, debt's not looking good now. Of course it failed, because why not? All right, let's see. Now, if I delete some of these ships, like, I love subs and all, but they're not very good. How many of these destroyers we got? We got that much more manpower back. <laughs> uh, hey, better infantry rifles are nice, though. More soft attack. It's not much, but we'll take it. Might as well do that. Might as well. All right, and then get some more support weapons, more defense. After this, we shall do Anglophobia. We are set to meet the English ambassador to Wales today. Why Why the now exiled imperialist tyrants bother to pretend they're not hostile to the interests of Wales and its people is beyond the why mob Darrow gone. It matters not in the end what plied the or pithy excuses and words come out of the ambassador's mouth. We know the Engl what England truly intends. The why mob Darrow gone will put a few sh on the show. Put... Put on a show for the public and private, however, we will let this treacherous snake know exactly how we feel about English schemes. The era of Anglo-centric domination of the Isle is over. The age of the Welsh has begun. Kind of wild. We can buy a submarine. But there's literally no point to. Because all we do is we just want to delete the ships so we can get a little bit more manpower. What happened to our ships? Did I, I didn't delete all of them. I deleted the... I guess I deleted all of them. I thought I deleted just the uh, subs. Well, that's how much more manpower we got now. Jesus Christ. 
Population available, 0%. We did that. It's still going to be probably 0%. Anglophobia. Support our Irish friends. Irish were the first other Celtic peoples to throw off their shackles and oppose the English dogs and flaw through their, though their liberation may have been. They've done their best to contract this over the years. Strengthening their Gaelic tongue, even expelling English authority from Ireland in its entirety in the war. The Y mob Darrow God and proffers friendship to our Irish brothers. He reaches across the scene in a gesture of camaraderie to our once oppressed brethren, and that we may know that the true true scourge of the Isles. Not something so debased as ideology, but the traitorous blood of the Anglo population themselves. English ambassador. Say the ambassador was concerned as he exited the meeting with Julian. Kyle Evans was no, to say nothing at all. He expected that the leader of the Free Wells army would be obstinate. Perhaps even hostile to English interests, but the degree of utter hatred expressed by the Welsh nationals had been quite terrifying to behold. He got the feeling they were the Germans to land at Dover tomorrow. Mr. Evans would be quite happy to assist them. This would need to be reported back to England, and fast. Wales, it seems, would not be a friend to England in the near future. And what that meant for the future of England was a total unknown. At least he left swiftly. Oh, man. It's not going to be good. Civilian budget boost, huh? Well, we're still trying to build them, them uh, forts. It's going. Maybe not great, but it's going. <laughs> After this, we're going to form the CLA. So, the Free Wells Army, the view of the Y, Mad Darrow God is a mere prototype of our true goal. The creation of a unified group of Celtic nations capable of fighting back against the Anglo menace has been that has for centuries. Uh, Persecuted our kind, Irish, Scots, B Welsh, uh, Bretons. I uh, also be welcome to the Celtic Liberation Army. Some of our fellows may believe that taking such a harsh stance against the Anglo plague is unneeded, and they are fools. But they are fools. The Anglo is treacherous, unworthy, and all will stab the Celtic people in the moment the collective backs are bared. We cannot show weakness to animals; they can only be, there can only be preparation for what is to come. Good. Yeah, at least our deficit's not getting well. I was going to say it's not getting worse, but it seems like it's getting worse somehow. Join the organization. Hopefully the Scots join at least. So. Who are the Scots? Social democracy led by independent labor party. Mobilize the people, huh? English minority. They probably want to get rid of them people too, don't they? We got four people there. Itchy trigger. Hopefully they have a coup. Maybe they can have a coup. I would like that if they had a coup. That'd be kind of nice. Even better guns after this? Actually, which one was it? It is 65, so happy 65, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. That's a lot of lag. Wonder what happened. So if it's true, weapon improvements. Yeah, it's this one. So you just get a little bit more soft attack, a little more defense. Which is necessary, don't get me wrong, but... Man. It's not going to be good for us, is it? Democracy returns to Italy. Okay, very good for you guys. Even though we don't really agree with democracy, but whatever. We got 1.9 political power every day, which... Honestly, there's nothing we can do with it, which sucks. There we go. Cool. And then, repeal English suffrage. The Y mob Darrow God knows a true enemy of Wales. The enemy within. The Anglo population who settled illegally under English rule and sought to impose, us, impose upon us their way of life, their beliefs, and their foul language. They weigh in the shadows seeking to overturn the Welsh liberation through means of guile, and now the forces have failed. Well, we will act first against this past ourselves. By the order of the Y mob Darrow God, those who identify as English will be similarly stripped of their status as Welsh citizens. They will be forbidden from voting in mun municipal elections and national ones as well. Let the Anglo scourge try and worm their way into politics now. Keep spending. We need, we need that construction. Oh, we're not even close to being done yet. Oh, my goodness. Right, 27 days. Cool. And then we'll do the Glory of Wales, maybe? Hmm. A corporate Wales. Strict control. Improve of GDP growth. Compromise with members. Supporting the Welsh workers. Unions. That's the National Revolution, maybe. The time has come. All preparations and struggles have led us to this moment. The moment of truth, destiny, and glory. The Y mob Darrow God and Julian K.O. Evans has given us a simple order. The National Revolution is, is beginning in earnest. This project, long will put aside, will now be enacted. We will overcome the treacherous Anglo population inside our borders and return them to the filthy nation from whence they came. We shall purify Wales and return it to the might which it has always possessed but never used. Wales will be great once again. Oh, we actually lose political power from that, huh? Oh, it's available, huh? What a bunch of lies. Maybe we should decrease black market trading then, if it's not good. Oh, we need more stability. Oh, we like no stability. Oh, you know what? 
That's that's such crap. How does it always fail? Always, always, always fails. That's actually a little bit ahead of time. Uh, how about artillery? Maybe, maybe not. Hmm. Deport the Anglo's. Might as well. The deportion of the Anglo population is something we must do without any unneeded cruelty. We are not monsters like their nation, after all. We will round up those classifieds as being of English descent and simply cart them to the nearest border towns. From there, we will give no hindrance, saving, save preventing them from crossing back over. The Anglo problem has its answer, and for the glory of the National Revolution, all loyal Welshmen will help us enact this. There is, of course, the matter of those children of the Anglo, part Anglo blood, but they can simply be adopted or dumped with the rest for all we care. And we get the event of the English little English girl. Glory of Wales, huh? Well, stability would be nice, but still. Indonesia more? Cool. Uh, what happens if we slice this for now? It honestly probably wouldn't hurt us at all. Then we'll do infantry weapons 4, or I guess it's technically 7. That's not bad, even more soft attack. We gotta get as much soft attack as possible. Yeah. Motor's equipment wouldn't be bad, but we don't really use it too much, I think. Oh man, the, our, our situation is just so not good. As you can tell from the rest of this episode, it's just been not great for us, isn't it? We can never get buy more guns. Why can't we buy guns from like the CIA or Burgundy or or maybe Orbel's Magadan? <laughs> oh man, can you imagine if Orbel's Magadan was actually here and then that could get sent as like people and we'll pay him, you know, for services? That'd be so cool. Uh, a freedom up for, for the Welsh. The Welsh people are a special group amongst the nation of the world. We alone have our kept our culture and values alive on nigh, for, ha, for nigh, on six centuries with no help from anyone else. We alone have freed ourselves from our oppressors' grasp on our own terms and not those of the English imperialists. For this, uh, they shall be given all freedoms that were denied them, though they were, they who were mistreated by their employers will have the right of complaint to the government. There will be jobs on offer for all students and the support for artistic and cultural expression. Britain's circuses saith the Romans, and the empire might be a thousand years dead, but the lessons they imparted are not. Thing, little English girl. Emily, Emily, was sad as she got on the truck heading towards the English border. She didn't know exactly why her family were being forced to leave, but she rather hoped that it wasn't forever. She had far too many friends in Cardiff to just leave all of a sudden, and while some of them were on the other trucks, many of them were staying behind. As near as she could tell, it was all over whether her parents were Welsh or not. What, what she rather confused Emily, Emily, I can't say her name right, now she thought they were Welsh, but the men with the guns were ins insisting otherwise. She never lived anywhere else, and she tried to say as much, but her non her before she got through the sentence. As the trucks moved off, Emily hoped whether she was going it, going that it had a bigger ho house at least, wherever she was going. They'll have a new home soon. Man, I can never read that well in TNL, can I? Emily. Emily. Pronunciations. Black market stock available. I saw six. I'm like, how do we have six? I'm like, oh yeah, we bought stuff. Or, you know, we have the dockyards. So we get more convoys. At least we get more convoys, right? That's always good, right? And it fails. Boom. Freedom for the Welsh. Expand the FWA. A key part of our defensive strategy in the event of another invasion by the treacherous English imperialists is a free Welsh army. Our military is well trained and well disciplined, but what we truly lack are the numbers needed to react to an assault on multiple fronts. Limited conscription will do for the most part, but conscripts are not a reliable solution to the man problem in the manpower problem in the long term. We need volunteers. Volunteers who will sacrifice their lives willingly for Wales, not because they had the misfortune to be drafted. This is because they had the misfortune to be to be drafted. This is especially true when considering the propaganda the English will no doubt feed their own troops. Perhaps if they realize they were they're fighting free men, they might have second thoughts. Okay, so they get even more defensive core territory. That's nice. That's actually really good. Better artillery. We'll see. We don't have enough for an army. Or an air force, I should really say. Not, not for an army. Motorized. Well, if we have artillery pieces, we can also make them a little better, right? Total effective manpower, huh? Oh, we heard, heard a lot because of austerity, but still. Civilian budget boost? Nope. Spend more money. Because we have to. Because that's how else, how else we're going to build up more land forts. Free Wales Youth. The Free Wales Youth Organization has a single purpose to educate the young people of our nation on the re realities of our world. The National Revolution demands their assistance. The National Revolution needs their help to be completed. The English shot their grandparents, oppressed their parents under the guise of unionism and choice. It's up to the new generation of men and women in this country to ensure this never happens again. They will be taught ideology, basic training to prepare them for volunteering. 
in the armed forces in the Welsh language that their ancestors so long ago spoke with fluency. Most of all, however, they will be taught that the Y mob Darrow gun was never wrong. More guns, huh? Well, I guess it's time to go to 1966. It's actually a little bit ahead of time, so we've actually caught up, so that's not too bad. If that's the case, we're going to probably do some anti-tank stuff just in case, because obviously we don't have nearly enough anti-tank. I don't understand how we were relatively successful early on with buying guns on the black market to always, literally always failing every single time. That definitely does not make me happy. Let's see, we've this one done. Three days. Two days. And, yeah, that would be good. There you go. Good, 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 good. That's enough. Realize the revolution is over. Never ending revolution, huh? Um, that's enough. Or it never ends. Oh. Well, the glory of the Wales shown. What is Wales if not a glorious nation? A nation to be seen over the world and admired. Our great riches, our mighty soldiers, and our beloved leader, Julian Kyo Evans at Y Mob Darogam. Our nation is engaged in the struggle of national liberation, but even so, we per persevere onwards to greater and more comprehensive victories. The Y Mob Darogan wants nations the world over to look at our nation with envy. Not too much envy, naturally, less they attempt to mimic the English imperialists and steal their riches, but somewhat envious nonetheless. We shall emerge from a struggle greater than ever before. Very good. Let's try it again, and fail. Yeah, that's not looking good. How did I know it was going to fail? How did I know? How did we know? My goodness. Hmm. My goodness. That's awesome sometime. Oh, what's that? Celtic Liberation Army member? Hmm. Deporting the Anglos is gone. Battle for Italy. Cool. And let's do a new economy for Wales. Coal is good. It fuels turbines and engines and fires all across the world. Wales has traditionally relied upon it for much of our wealth, but as in all good things, the Unionist pig screwed it up. Our economy is now almost entirely reliant upon coal and proceeds, something that is exceptionally risky. A solid economic policy is needed to rectify the situation at once, for at, or at least a, in the reasonable time frame. The Free Wales Army might not be economist by trade, but does not take a genius to work from the premise of we need something other than coal. Wales is valuable for more than just one metal, all things considered. Let us show that to the world. A little bit of lag, and as many times as I press the enter button, it doesn't go. Oh, I'm not sure about Iberia. The monitor of Clyde. Next election halt in the cabinet. Keeping yourselves dominant. Alright, not bad. Even some more soft attack, that'd be good. Peace conference? This must be a huge peace conference. Well, maybe a small one. Cease fire. Uh, despotism. Centralize his power. Representatives. Alright, as expected. Holding Wales together. That WA society, huh? Do we do that's enough? Or should we do never ending revolution? You guys let me know in the comments below. That's enough for never ending revolution. As well as compromise with our members. Or Welsh corporatism. Strict control. Supporting Welsh workers. State led trade unions. Or state business cooperation. Cooperation. Hmm. Let's go ahead and exploit our resources. Cars, tanks, building materials, boats, and a thousand other things are made from steel. Yet the imperialist English would never properly exploited our iron deposits to make it. Such incompetence is only to be expected, but all the same, it makes our job of rebuilding the economy far harder than it ought to be. On the other hand, the Free Wells Army taking credit for expanding the national economy would be quite the political coup, would not? Indeed, one might say it might prove highly beneficial to our public image, something that can never hurt. Oh, for sure, will be some initial expenses, but all the same, Welsh steel shall be ours soon enough. But unfortunately, that'll end today's episode right there, because, well... The next episode might be our last, as the English are probably going to come on in and really hurt us. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, when we will probably, or might get overran from the English. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.